Hello, it's me, Lily, a frog. I live in a pond and I love to tell stories. This story is a Tales from the Lily Pad original story by Marlene Werfel. It is a tribute story to a really, really, really good dog. And it's dedicated to all good dogs everywhere. Once upon a time, there was a puppy who lived under a veranda with his mother and his brothers and sisters. He didn't have a name yet, just his own unique puppy smell, and that's how his mother and his sisters and brothers recognized him. They loved him and would play with him and nap with him and play with him some more and nap with him some more so that all the puppies and their mothers smelled a little bit the same and a little bit different, but mostly like their milky mother, and that was his favorite smell in the whole world. In the house, under which the puppies lived, under the veranda, there were some children, a boy and a girl, and they would reach under the veranda and pull the puppies out one at a time and pet them and tell them they were good puppies. And they were. Then they'd put the puppies back with their mama. Once, a woman with an unfamiliar smell came and pulled just one of the puppies out from under the veranda with her long arm and unlike the children she did not put the puppy back after petting it there was one less puppy then and after a few days the smell of that puppy was forgotten then a man and a little girl came and the kids who lived in the house took all the puppies out from underneath the veranda and they put them in a basket with a blanket in it and they let the man and the little girl look at all the puppies. They took the one who wouldn't stop licking the little girl's nose away with them and soon that puppy's smell was forgotten too. Then the kids who lived in the house took the basket of puppies with them. There were four puppies in the basket, and they walked to the park shouting, Puppies to give away! Puppies to give to a good home! Puppies! The kids sat at the park all day, and lots of kids came over to see the puppies and said how cute they were. Aww, said the little girls. Aww, said the little boys, and lots of mums and dads said the words, No, oh no, 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 no. But one of the puppies went home with a mom and a little girl who put the puppy in a basket on the front of her bicycle. One of the puppies went home with a dad carrying a laptop under the other arm. And one puppy went home with an old man with a long white beard who buttoned the little puppy up in his cardigan sweater. That left just one puppy. The one this story is about. The one without a name, just a smell, who went back home to his mama that night. That puppy was scared of all the children saying, aww, and the mom saying, no, oh, no, 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 and the unfamiliar smells, not at all like his mother, and the sounds of traffic and lawnmowers and babies crying, and when people would put their hand out to him, he'd bury his little nose under his front paws and shake with fear. So the people would pet a different puppy, one that wasn't afraid. The puppy was perfectly happy with his mama under the veranda, but she started to nip at him sometimes when he wanted milk, and there was no one fun to play with like his brothers and sisters were fun, and he began to wander out from under the veranda and to look for something new to do and something new to smell. On one such excursion, when he had found a pair of rubber boots to play with and chew on, a little girl saw him and she screamed, Oh! That is the cutest puppy I have ever seen in my entire life. And the puppy ran back to the hole under the veranda and the girl chased him screaming, so cute. Oh, so, 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 so cute. All the way. The girl called, here, puppy, come on out so I can pet you. But the puppy wouldn't. He was afraid of the screaming. He just hid with his mama. And when his mama got out from underneath the veranda to say hi to the little girl and to wag her tail, the puppy stayed put. But every day, the little girl came back to see the puppy, and every day, she had something interesting or delicious in her hand. And when she arrived with a piece of bacon left over from breakfast, the puppy just couldn't resist, and he ran out to smell her. The little girl was amazing. Not only did she have bacon, but she smelled like grass and sunshine and having fun too. She had gentle hands and she whispered, I love you to the puppy. And she let him chase her around in circles and catch her. Then she'd spin around and chase the puppy. 
Eventually, the puppy got so tired out from the chasing, and he rolled over on his back, and the little girl picked him up and petted him on his fluffy puppy forehead until he fell asleep in her strong arms. When the puppy woke up, he was on a bed, and the little girl was beside him reading a book. The puppy thought the book might be delicious, so he gave it a nibble, but the little girl laughed, and she said, No, puppy, don't eat books, and the puppy fell back asleep. They had so much fun together. They went for walks every day, and the little girl threw balls for the puppy to chase. Then the puppy would catch the ball, run back to the little girl, and drop it at her feet. Again, the puppy would say, throw the ball again. And the girl would, and the puppy would bring the ball back, and she'd say, good boy, good bear. Bear was the dog's name because the girl called him bear. Here, bear, sit, bear, supper time, bear. Walkies, bear, time for your walk, and good boy, good bear. Bear grew up to be a tall, long-legged dog whose eyes were level with the dinner table. His ears were floppy, and he was black all over with a white tummy and white spots on his nose and a shape just like the province of Manitoba on his forehead. Nobody knew particularly what kind of dog Bear was, some kind of mix of dog where he did all the things that dogs did. He retrieved like all good water dog breeds. When the girl threw the ball in a river or a lake, Bear would swim out to it and drop it at her feet before shaking all the water off his body from his nose to the tip of his tail. And Bear loved to pull. If he had a harness on, he'd drag whatever was behind him with all his might. He had a stiff, thick undercoat like a husky so that the snow didn't bug him at all. In fact, it was pretty much his favorite stuff. And Bear liked to point. If the girl took him for a walk in the woods, which was absolutely his favorite thing to do, he'd use his body to point or signal to the girl where all the wildlife was, where the squirrels and porcupines and rough grouse and jackrabbits were. Deep in Bear's body was the conviction that at some point the girl would notice how skillfully Bear pointed out the wildlife around them to her, and she'd pull out a boom boom stick or a bow and arrow, and just as skillfully as he pointed, she would hunt all the squirrels and porcupines and rough grouse and jackrabbits, and the girl and the dog would feast together on their prey. But this only ever happened in Bear's dreams, where he and the girl were king and queen of the woods, her arms full of squirrel carcasses, and he with a huge jackrabbit in his jaws. While Bear slept, the girl could see his legs dream running through the woods and see him shaking the dream rabbit back and forth in his jaws. Every day when the girl got down Bear's leash from the hook by the door, he'd look at her with his big doggy eyes and say, Now we will go to the woods and I will show you where all the squirrels and porcupines and wild chickens and skunks are and you will shoot them with your boom boom stick and I'll drag them out of the underbrush and there will be a feast. And the girl would say, Come on, Bear, walkies. But she'd never ever bring a boom boom stick. This was Bear's only sorrow in life. Until... The voices in the house began to change. It used to be a calm house, but sometimes not. And when it was not, because the alpha male and alpha female were angry with each other and would speak in harsh voices and bang things around, Bear would go hide in the curtains. This happened sometimes, and then more and more often, and then Bear was mostly hiding in the curtains. And eventually, the house did become calm again, but the people began to pack things in boxes. The man left with many boxes, and the girl's mother kept packing things up, until the last thing in the house was the mother, the girl, and Bear. They went for a car ride together, and the girl sobbed all the way while holding Bear in a way that was strangely too tight. They went to a place that smelled like so many humans and so many dogs and so many cats and so many rabbits and other animals that Bear had never smelled before. And the girl and the mother said, Good boy, you are a good dog. We love you. And they left Bear and his leash and his water dish behind with the many new smells. Somebody petted Bear and led him to a small room with a big window that faced into the building instead of outside the building. Through the window, Bear could see many people walking by every day. I'm sure the girl will be back for walkies, thought Bear. But the girl did not come back. 
Somebody took Bear for a walk each night, but it was never the girl, and it was never in the woods. It was around and around a fence outside. Every day, hundreds of people came into the building, sometimes bringing animals in, sometimes bringing animals out. Aww, Bear would hear the people saying, but always about the adorable puppies and kitties across the hallway, never about Bear. Bear's favorite thing was playgroup. Every day, somebody would bring him to a room full of other dogs and toys, and he'd get to meet new dogs and play. It was easy for Bear to be the boss of playgroup because he was so big and because he'd been to playgroup so many times. Unless there was a border collie there who would do tricks with their eyes on Bear. Bear didn't understand how border collies could be so smart, but they were, and he would defer always to their brilliance and stature. Sometimes people would ask to meet Bear, but when he'd come out to meet them, he was shy and aloof. He never knew what was expected of him, and then they'd say goodbye and go to meet other dogs, sometimes leaving with someone from his playgroup on a leash. One day, a man and a woman asked to meet Bear, and they sat with him for a long time and asked if he'd like to be their dog. He wasn't sure, but the playgroup leader came in with Bear's leash and suggested they take him for a walk around the fence. Bear loved walks, and he wagged his tail and tried not to pull on the leash, but when he saw a squirrel, he forgot everything about being nice on a leash, and all he could think was, squirrel, and he tugged so hard on the leash that the woman dropped it, and he ran to the fence, and he pointed with his whole body so they could see it too. His nose, his knee, his spine, his tail all formed a straight arrow pointing to the squirrel, screaming in a tree at them. Aww, he's showing us the squirrel, said the woman. Oh, good boy, said the man, and then he pulled a thing out of his pocket. It was a rectangular-shaped thing, and he pointed it at the squirrel, and the thing went, click, got it, said the man, and he showed a picture of the squirrel to the woman. Nice, she said. Bear was overcome with adoration for the man and the woman. He rolled over onto his back and let them scratch his tummy, and when they did, he could feel in the muscles of their arms, in the sinews, in the core of their being, that they, like him, were too great for a place like this, a place full of locked enclosures within locked enclosures within locked enclosures within fences. And he could feel that they too longed to walk in the woods and be king and queen of the land all around them. You'll be our dog now, said the woman. Your name will be Prince. And Prince said, yes. The man and the woman were wonderful, and they took Prince for a walk in the woods every day. Except in the winter, when the conditions were just right, they'd go for a cross-country ski instead. And the man would bring with him his clicky box, sometimes one with a great huge lens, and he'd take pictures of the wildlife that Prince pointed out to him. Woodpeckers, chickadees, jackrabbits, skunks, coyotes, beavers, and once a porcupine in a tree. In Prince's dreams, the woman wore the porcupine as a magnificent crown, and the coyotes bowed down to her and sang of her beauty. The man wore a belt which was slung with snowshoe hairs all around his waist. In one strong arm, he held his camera and SLR lens, which was as large as a citadel cannon. On one of his shoulders sat a chickadee, and on the other, a blue jay, and in front of them, was Prince, and on his head was perched a pileated woodpecker, poised for flight. Oh, he had a great life, and he was a really, really, really good dog.